but how do you make that interactive and and long lasting like how do you make how do you make it so that someone goes and visit it so i think of like horseshoe falls in yosemite yeah you know every year you know at some point the sun goes behind the falls and it becomes a fire falls and so yes. you have people lining up to do it it's like the or like the, the, the blood moon like everyone takes yes. pictures of the blood moon and it's like okay guys get it yeah how can you create something like that so that you know it's also interactive on the on the human scale not just the google earth scale yeah yeah, yeah. and then they have but they have to be there they have to see it and while they're there yeah. they get to learn about this whole new way of being and living and which which and which is which is exactly it's the entry point yeah into an alternative lifestyle yeah and that alternative hopefully won't be even called alternative i my work will be done when we no longer call it the alternative I'm very fascinated by what you do because I'm also thinking about like what can I do to use the farm as a as a canvas mm. for I love what you're doing at the farm. Yeah. Yeah, I would love for you, you know, you, you got to come out. Um I I was thinking about Google Earth art, right? Like how can I what message, what can I do to like create a message that will yes, attract a ton of people to the farm and all the things and people come and do the selfies and understand the Instagram culture and like pander to all of that without losing sight of the message, understanding that I have to write the headline, understanding that like all those, those things, but how can I build a story that is bigger than me that really just says something truthfully, like powerfully. And, and I don't know that I have the story. I definitely have like a concept, which is some level of Google earth art. Like what, what would I expect in a field? Like what would draw me to a field? Well, I, I always thought about the, the crop circle idea and, and how <laughs> aliens are not, it still it garners a lot of attention. Um, what can I do to like really, really, really draw some, some attention to that? And then how can I paint a picture that doesn't just say this is a problem, but that also says here's a solution? Like I what? mean, you are providing a solution, which is what I think is so interesting, right? The farm is yeah. not inviting, is not telling people what's wrong with it. It's yes. telling, it's telling people, look at what we can do yeah. with land. Yes. Look at what kind of community we could build. Look at what kind of people we can attract, and look at all the other people who care about this too. You're not alone. Yes. And if we if we can come together, and 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 we can do all these cool things, imagine what is possible if more people joined this movement. Yes. And so it's almost like you're you you are creating a, a a model a blueprint for success hopefully that others could you know interpret and follow along and so i mean the marketing part of it so you're you're saying creating one big piece of google art i almost feel is not it'll be a lot more powerful have you seen the um, biggest little farm on netflix yeah, of course right yes right and so so they didn't need a piece of art to tell their story because their story was intrinsically cool now can we add a piece of art to it? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely add some I think we like could add a piece of big, art. Big, epic piece of art. I mean, I art. think the backstory behind that is that farm is owned by billionaires, and mm -hmm. it's in California, so they're getting a budget to do a Netflix series and doing the whole thing, and it's started by some guy who also had experience filming yeah, wildlife, yeah, yeah. Nah, 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 nah. like he had all the right pieces just like you do um, in, in telling your the way you tell your stories, um, and I know you're always looking for those pieces, but I'm, I'm, I'll say today that I'm interested in funding one of your next pieces. And, and I don't know, I even have the money, but I'm just interested in doing it, right? Like I, I will find the money because I know that I can find brands and, and or just raise it myself to essentially do something of that nature. But I, I'm trying to figure out how, because here's the thing with the solution is like a lot, it doesn't, it doesn't give the punch that the problem does, right? So two things go viral, yeah. aspiring, enraging. Aspiring is so much harder to do. Like it's so it freaking narrow compared to the plastic tap is, is significantly more impactful and it, it it's more of a guaranteed hit compared to, you know, what would be the antithesis of that? Like turning off the plastic tap, like how would you represent that? And then it wouldn't have the same impact, right? So in this case, the plastic is the perfect villain and the villain then tells the beginning of the story because every every story needs to start kind of in a sense with the negative reputation environment and that villain, right? So plastics has a negative reputation environment and then there's a very specific villain in this case. It's kind of, you know, the, the manufacturing of plastics to begin with. But the idea of trying to hit it on the hero is so much harder 
yeah. and trying to hit it on the villain. So I know I need the villain, or I know it will help me, but I really want the focus to be on the hero. And I don't want that hero to be me. It's not about me, and it's not about our farm. It's about the community and what all of that can do. And we've we've tapped into it before. Like, the farm had its first big viral success when we were able to build earthships. So you know what earthships are? Have you heard of earthships? No, tell so me. We actually built earthships on our, uh, an earthship Earth? on our land. Earth, Earth ships. ships. Yeah. So like a spaceship, but an Earth Okay, I'll ship. Literally, I'm literally going to Google it. You'll actually appreciate this. <laughs> I can't believe you haven't heard about it. I've this. never heard of them, yeah. Yeah. I'm um, like the opposite of a farmer. Yeah, but it's <laughs> I'm not a- I'm really it, a terrible- No, but here's the thing. It's not It's not really human. just a farm uh, thing. It's buildings built out of recycled materials, uh, built out of bottles, cans. So this is all cans, for example. Got it. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me uh, let me go back here and-, and uh, what should I do here? Open image and new tab. Right. So this is buildings built out of tires, bottles, cans, recycled materials, essentially. Yep. Um, and so in 2012, we brought Michael Reynolds, who's the architect who invented Earthships in Taos, New Mexico, mm-hmm. and kind of the New Mexico. Oh, I, I know. I've seen his work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, his, his name is, he's called the Garbage Warrior. Yeah, yep, right. Yep, and yep, that was yep. the name of the documentary. And so they did these kind of amazing, interesting, intricate buildings. This one is not as pretty as some of the other ones. Like, you know, some of these buildings are pretty freaking cool looking. And so we built one on our farm. We raised you know, money for Kickstarter. This is back in the heyday of 2012. So <laughs> Facebook Different and Archive. Yeah, it's just that, it, you know, if I had to do it again today, I don't know I would be as successful. And I have more followers today, but mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's it's different, right? Um, that being said, we had so many people showing up. There's so much momentum. There's so many things. But what was beautiful at that time is that the villain of the financial crisis and kind of the year of the protester in 2011, like the the, the climate at that moment was perfect for it. Um, and then the need for that solution was like very real. And now post pandemic, well, I'll say post pandemic, hopefully, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> but you know, Fingers whatever crossed. tail end of at least first the fourth big wave. wave, yeah, fourth, <laughs> fourth, you know, fourth big wave, which you can kind of see as one giant tsunami of sorts, um, uh, with aftershocks of sorts, um, has kind of hit. There is that, that feeling again. So mm. it's the right moment. But how, how to tell that story with the villain and with the hero and really shine the light on the hero and have it be a permanent piece of art? Like, I, it has to be building man, not burning man. Mm-hmm. That, that's my, like, need for it, right? So it has to be building man, which means probably going to involve organic matter or plants, quite literally. What could we do that gets... MTL blog to talk about it, but not just MTL blog. Like, how can it how can it be a headline that the, even the Wall Street Journal, well, Wall Street Journal is maybe the wrong one, but New York Times or something would talk about, or or, or Entrepreneur.com can talk about because there's different spins to the different elements of this. But the but how can you get these places to talk about it um, and do it in a way that's truly inspiring? Uh, I mean, I think it's, uh, I think it's possible. I mean, I think, um, I, mean, it's I, I hear, I hear that it's harder. <laughs> Absolutely agree. Yeah. Um, that's why less people do it. And that's why when you figure out how to do it, it'll be a lot more popular. You know, you that's think fair. of, you think of something like, uh, the gangster gardener. I don't know. I, yeah, I've had him. I've had him on my podcast. There you go. So, you know, <laughs> I literally had him on my podcast. Is gardening exciting? No. Are no. gangsters exciting? No, but a gangster gardener is fucking exciting. Right. I, I, <laughs> yeah, he had the right term for it, and he had the right platform, which was TEDx or right. TED. I think yeah, it was TED. TED, yeah. Ted, but he he also had done the work. He had the right background. He had he had the right experiments. He you know he like every which we have too. Which, which you can yeah exactly, and that is that is a process of iteration. And so I think this idea is it's an intersection of unexpected elements. In your case, if you're creating something uh, that you want to live forever. Um, it's, it has to it's, 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 so it's slow, right? You're using organic matter. It's slow. But yeah. like, how can you use slowness to your advantage? I would say, well, what if this is an art installation that looked different with every season? What yes. if this is an art installation that grew? I don't know. What if, what if, what if, uh, okay, I'm just going to throw something out there. What if it was like a, 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 a face yeah. that you could constantly change yes. by arranging objects, tables, whatever. Yeah. But the hair were like trees. And yeah. then maybe, maybe it's like, orange trees and now suddenly this 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 face has orange hair yeah and then and then this face has you know different different hair and then but the face could be someone that could be representative of 
someone in the community. It could be a celebration of a person that has inspired you. I don't know. Like that could be one simple way. And, and you can imagine like this face, you can uh, check out this face from Google Earth that changes with the seasons. Yeah. I, I no. thought about going to the garden center and every week getting all the flowers that are flowered at that moment and then planting them next to one another mm -hmm. so that week after week after week, the message, whatever be, be it visual or written or visual and written, I mean, it's both the same in a sense, but you get what I mean, would literally like move with the season because this week it's this flower, next week is next and next. And then you by planting them next to one another. That's cool. Then it would, then the, the, the art piece would have to be done over time where you'd send up a drone every day or every week, send it to the exact GPS coordinates <laughs> and literally take a picture, doop, 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 time lapsing it moving. The yeah. message almost like literally being written in flower. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and flowers and trees, but it, you know, I don't know how to. But how do you make that interactive and, and long lasting? Like, how do you make, how do you make it so that someone goes and visit it? So I think of like Horseshoe Falls in Yosemite, yeah. you know, every year, you know, at some point the sun goes behind the falls and it becomes a fire falls. And so yes. you have people lining up to do it. It's like the, or like the, the, the blood moon, like everyone takes yes. pictures of the blood moon and it's like, okay guys, we get it. Yeah. How can you create something like that? So that, you know, it's also interactive on the, on the human scale, not just the Google earth scale. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then they have, but they have to be there. They have to see it. And while they're there, yeah. they get to learn about this whole new way of being and living and which, which, and which is, which is exactly, it's the entry point yeah. into an alternative lifestyle. Yeah. And that alternative hopefully won't be even called alternative. I, my work will be done when we no longer call it the alternative. Mm -hmm. The alternative shouldn't be that people who live in a homestead or who have connection to their food and grow their own food um, and who want to live in community, that shouldn't be that every time I say the word community, it's like, oh, commune cult, <laughs> wild, wild country. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, show. It's like, no, no, wait, hold on. There's no religion here. Like, there's no, there's no dogma behind this. This is just like, what if we lived more in harmony with nature, right? It's like, for me, it happened when I learned that if everyone lived like the average American, we would need 4.1 planets to survive. And I was like, oh, but I'm Canadian. Must be better. No, it's, it's actually worse. five planets because <laughs> we just have like less people per capita. And I was like, oh my God, like that's me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and then, and then, so I identified as an activist. I went to the Wall Street, you know, you know Occupy Wall Streets and I was there, but I just, I couldn't identify any longer. I went to, I even went to the Paris Climate Agreement and I was, you know, I saw that whole thing where they went around the, the what is it, the Arc de Triomphe, and they made that whole, Greenpeace had done that whole sun-like thing where they put paint all over the ground and on the street, and I see these things, and I was like, yeah, but mm, I don't know. There was something that was just missing the entire time I was there because it was just a bunch of people talking. Mm. I was like, yeah, we agree that we're eventually going to do this thing, and I'm like, I get that, that there's value to that, but people can back out like Trump did. Mm -hmm. People can, it could just change, or they're just not going to hit the targets, or, or it's just a way of getting, like, the win without any real win. And, and so it just, it felt, I felt like helpless and that's back to the ability piece. It's like, what ability do I have? And then that answer became, well, I can plant more trees. Like I can, I can build things out of recycled materials. I can just try, I can experiment. I can use this farm as a sandbox, but I need to do something so powerful that I can actually get the bureaucrats and the system behind me. Because right now, housing is a, a problem, right? Affordable housing is becoming more and more of an issue. But if you were to become a farmer, you could build a house on your farm, but you can't do it without, until you become a farmer. But what, what, what point am I a farmer? At what point, look, I take care of all the finances of the farm. I do a lot of the accounting for the farm. Am I a farmer? Even if I spend less time in the field and more time behind the, behind the books, like if, if I'm figuring out how to make art pieces that are gonna bring people to the farm, Am I a farmer? Like, when, when do I cross that line? Is it just because of how much garlic I sell and how much money I make? Because that's the line. That's the current box. So I know how to play that game, and I'll, and I'll do it, because we planted the garlic. It's done, right? The work is there. We're having our harvest dance party to clean it all up and, and get it going, right? But the, as they clean up uh, the garlic, harvest the garlic and clean it, the garlic. So I'm using ways of innovating to build community. I'm kind of using these different skill sets to make that happen, but I still feel like if I can make one really powerful statement that's super simple, but but understandable at the at the view of an image or the view of a quick video or a 15 second, 30 second reel or whatever, 
if somebody could see that quick little clip or that quick mm-hmm. gif or that quick thing and understand the message, then that's that's where I think you know we can we can kind of have a ho- another hockey stick like moment for our community because that that Earthship was a hockey stick moment for us, and it, and it it led to the it led us here, and now part of my innovation or and 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 I and and also the dedication of of a lots and lots and lots of people and volunteers and people who are there at the farm all the time, it's because of them that we're now getting to a place where people can kind of come there comfortably. But the next move beyond like setting up the basics of comfort and being able to receive a ton of people is something deeply more impactful, like deeply more, I don't know. It, it has to, it has to hit you in a way that, that is, that is just different than like, Oh, we have a farm. And it's like, yeah, okay. But then that farm is living and dying based on convenience. Like the reason why our farm is doing okay is because we're so close to the city. We're 20 minutes away from downtown Montreal. Um, but most farms can't replicate what I'm going to do. And once I've done it, it becomes harder and harder and harder. It's like that pyramid thing again, right? As, as everyone starts getting into the game, that pyramid starts to flatten and less and less people are going to get there. So how, how can I kind of really pave the way to say we can actually... Because I, I do see laws that can be changed where people's backyards and homesteads could be built much more cheaply and sustainably if they are involved in farming if counties or sections of land would no longer be dezoned or rezoned for residential to build a bunch of condos, but instead would be rezoned to build integrative communities. You know, so there is, there are like real solutions that I think I can see. And there's real like specific policy changes that I would be willing to put behind that where I'm like, here are the direct actions. And like, I've always been inspired by the Coney 2012 uh, thing where they were like, Tweet these exact 20 people and these exact 12 people because that can make, you know, Joseph Coney famous. And, and I thought that was brilliant. And if you did that on a very specific level, like if a small mayor of a town or like the, you know, I don't know, the, the agricultural minister of Quebec got like a hundred or a, even a thousand tweets directed at them. Like they're, they're going to pay attention. Like they're like, they don't get tweeted at very often you know what i mean these are very low level they're not donald trump they're 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 people who who with a small amount of noise can be reached and and then being invited to a dinner or to, to to and if you pick those people like imagine the next step is i want these 50 people at a dinner to talk about how we can change uh integrate farming into communities even in suburbia like fully let's have that dinner, I think that that's doable. But, so I, I kind of see the campaign, beh- I see the story behind the story, but I don't yet have the, the idea of the punch fully. I've, I have some version of it, but that's where I'm at. But it almost feels like you don't need that big of a punch if all you need is a few thousand people motivated, super lo- hyper-locally. I mean, yeah. I, see, I see that there's always, it's always great to get a lot of attention. Yes. But you don't need it. So you can, fair. that means that you can start smaller. You can do smaller, you can do smaller, I can make that dinner powerful anyway. experiments. Yes. And you could probably pull that dinner off. Yeah. I mean, if anything, you have a lot of ingredients that are already really, really solid. You have True. a plan, you have an understanding, you have a community, um, you have case studies of what it could be. You, you might need to f- bring a couple antagonists to your side and say like, even these guys who are on the polar opposite of the political spectrum think it's a great idea. I need um, the photo op for the, for the politician though. Like if Justin Trudeau is going to show up, I need I need something that he or she, whoever this, this influencer person could, is, they can they can stand behind. Because I always say like, when my mom and the mayor can shake hands in front of something and say we want more of this in our town, that's the day that it will mm-hmm. start to proliferate. And then I say, and then behind that is investors and and I call them you know the the, the hippies of sorts. Like if the activist hippie type you know, granola, whatever word you want to use, not trying to be derogatory in any way, when those people who are like real purists about the movement can get behind it and investors can get behind it. And um, my mom, typical Italian mom who just, you know, wants her (laughs) son to do well and the mayor, and I say the mayor, but it could be the prime minister or whatever. If they can all, those stakeholders can come to the same table and say, we want more of this in our town, then I think it will proliferate. And that's kind of my theory Mm-hmm. But you're right. You're right that I'm I'm actually it's like I'm going for the big hurrah, but I don't necessarily have to do that. I can go with the smaller wins. 
Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, they're not they're the not world. mutually exclusive. Yeah, they're, right. they're actually. I can build a whole hand planet hand. just to make both of them happen. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. You know, I think of um, uh, what's his name, the guy who started the green school in Bali. Yep, John. Yep, something. I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. I don't know. I can't remember his last name. He right just now. started by building his own house. Yeah, uh, you know, his own house out of bamboo, super sustainable, really cool, really extravagant, very luxurious. And then he started building a village and he started building a school. And then now he's sort of taken over this. Like, that's why but it's Bali so much easier to do in hub. Bali. But it's oh, yeah, so it's much cheaper. easier. It's, not, it's, it's cheaper, but it's also the regulations, the way of doing like, yeah, yeah. Because trust me, I can build a building tomorrow, but it's the red tape. Yeah, yeah. It's the prop. That's the problem that we have to solve in the but first yeah, place. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's literally the red tape that says, well, wait a second. Why aren't we getting behind? Projects like this, like we, I should be having, and it's not just me, this type of solution should have way more attention, but it's not getting it because it's just, it's not able to get the, the headlines like Donald Trump can, or it's not able to get the headlines like uh, Tesla can or mm. Elon Musk can. And so there's, there's something that can be done there. Um, and I'm interested in figuring that out. I, I just, you know, I, I, I would love to ask you, um, Maybe I don't. How long are we running here? Well, an hour and twenty. Oh, okay, almost. Okay, so we'll we'll wrap this up. But I'll, I'll ask you this question, which is, um, I guess twofold. One, it's kind of inspired by the question we spoke about right before we turned on the podcast, right? Um, you know, you said something, and maybe I'll let you quote it. But the. I'm curious as to who inspires you, right? I'm curious as to like what creators or maybe other artists or other photographers or other people maybe traditionally have inspired you. And then I'm curious as to the question that you pose and I'll let, I'll let you say it because I think you nailed it um, and you have the references behind it. But it's, you know, along the, those lines of not what would you do if you couldn't fail, but what would you do if you did fail and you would do it anyway? Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, Seth Godin. Yeah. Actually, I heard him on someone else's podcast, uh, Farnham Street blog. Um, and yeah, and that was just, he says like the the question of like, what would you do if you couldn't fail is a stupid question um, because there were so many things that you would do if you couldn't fail. You do a bunch of things. Of it's course. Not, so it's not challenging. It's not it, the joy. There's no joy in it knowing that you're going to succeed. Um, so a more interesting question is, you know, what would you do if you knew you're going to fail? Um and, and you're guaranteed to fail, what would you do anyways? Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know if I have a really good answer for that question, but I thought it was such a thought-provoking question. Mm. Um, because so often we focus on the result instead of the journey, right? yeah. the destination instead of the journey, and this this forces you to reconsider, like, well, what's, what's a life worth living? What mm. is something that you'd be happy to do every single day? Uh, it reminds me of another, you know, when we think about, so when you're struggling to figure out what to do, what if you broke down your ideal week and like, what would your, what would you do be, be doing with your time? Mm. Right? Because ultimately that's how we live our lives. It's week by week. It's yeah, not moment to moment. Yeah. So, so, so if you say, well, I love talking to people. Um, well then this podcast is perfect because it gives you the excuse to invite and reach out to new people over and over again. If you love going out or if you love traveling, then you should find ways to structure your life so that you can do that. And that helps you. It's a far more interesting question than I think what profession do you want to have? Because what perf that's just an output. Yep. You know, that's just a, a means and to it's an end. And it's so implying that you're going to use it as a way to buy other things. Or, or, yeah, yeah exactly. it's like means basically buy, buying yeah. your happiness. Yes. That's basically every means single consumer <laughs> yep. uh, marketing thing out there. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so those are just, I guess, a couple thought-provoking questions. But in terms of who I look up to or who I follow, I don't, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't have this um, idle mindset. I don't like look up at individuals i think everyone's interesting and everyone has something to teach and there's something to learn from everyone so i spend a lot of time listening to nonfiction, okay. um a lot of different audiobooks um uh it doesn't really matter if it's marketing or life or otherwise i just think that everyone has something to teach and i'm super curious at the idea so i think i 
I live on the intersection of worlds and I am someone that is extrinsically inspired, not intrinsically inspired. I don't sit at home and come up with brilliant ideas. I need to go out and meet people and talk to them and mm. hear their perspectives. And through that conversation, so like now you've just kind of planted this seed of like a living organic art. So now this in the back of my <laughs> mind is just like, well, what if I I'm had you see 30 what I acres? <laughs> yeah. What if I had 30 acres? What could come out of it? And yeah. I wouldn't have had that thought otherwise because there would have been no reason to think about it. Um, yep. And I think, you know, it's funny because many people like when you go into this creative brainstorm process are like what well, let's just remove all limits like what what do you imagine and i find that to be a really frustrating place because when you're in the business of creating things that haven't been done before like everything's going to be an idea that's uh, like too expensive to create or too hard to do and so it's far more interesting to think about well give me a couple constraints give me give me like what's realistic and then i'm going to start pushing the boundaries mm -hmm. of what what those look like and i think within those boundaries is where you get to be creative um yeah. so yeah, I kind of sidestep both your questions, I think, but that's no, not yeah. really. I, 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 I think I think you you said something no very relevant, which is that you're not idolizing or looking up to any specific person, but there are people who have inspired you along the way, and there's different layers of that inspiration that are just found, like you said, extrin extrinsically, meaning going out and interacting, you yeah. start to see, oh wow, there's potential in there, um, and I think you're exposing elements of your process. Which is like not just, hey, I, if I can dream anything, what would I dream? But more so, what do people dream? Where do the limits of people... Like, it, it, I think you kind of said something fundamental about what your art does, which is that you are putting... You're finding where the, where the lines in the sand are and saying, well, what if we went like uh, it's a little bit further? Or what if we can push it a little bit in there, this way, that way, or whatever, you know? Um, and I think that's very wise because that allows it to build over time. Right? Like... It's actually, you can use, rather than just always dreaming the craziest of dreams, right? Sometimes by making it a very specific and achie achievable goal, it's significantly more impactful and more reasonable to get people to, to, f to fund and to get behind, right? Like, I always find it fascinating that NASA has a hard time raising money. Where, or they have to justify, the government has to justify why we're spending so much money on space. And it's very interesting because it's, it's a huge conversation right now. Uh, Jeff Bezos and um, uh, Richard, Branson. Richard Branson both went up to space. Some would argue Richard Branson didn't go up to space, whatever. They both went up to space and spending billions of dollars at the end of the day building companies that are about having fun and bringing tourism. And some people are saying, well, oh, fuck these billionaires. Like, why aren't they solving problems here on Earth? And they say the same thing. With Elon Musk, right? Why do you want to go to Mars when we can just spend all that money and all that time making something happen here? And I think it's like the first thing I'll say to that is everything that they're innovating is still happening on Earth right now. All those dollars are being spent in their system in the current ecosystem, and they're funding engineers and people to figure out things that will apply to Earth as well as Mars or will apply to Earth, uh, Earth as well as space in some way, shape, or form. And I think those breakthroughs are not to be underestimated that money is not leaving earth right now okay yeah it's going up in space and doing these things but it will have implications on earth too so like like starlink will for example the you know uh, global uh, low earth uh, satellite or internet systems that will connect the world in, in many ways is that a good thing or a bad thing i don't know i'm not here to judge it i'm just trying to say i think it will create innovation but what i like about what they're doing is that there's something about what they're doing that is trying to take that box and just expand it a little bit now, are they doing it properly? Do I like Jeff Bezos or do I think Richard Branson deserves all this attention? Do I think Elon Musk is good or bad? I'm not here to judge whether they're good or bad. I think there's lots of bad things that some of these companies or the companies that they've built have done. I also think there's lots of innovative things that they've done, right? Um, yeah, it, it's, it's weird, right? It's like a hard place to, to find ourselves because sometimes the forefront of innovation is is a little messy and you know but i think the lesson to be taken away from those folks whatever you think about them is that they tell a really great story elon yes. especially so, right like he's able to get unbelievable he is able to make you believe that his company is going to work you know way back when it was it was it was not <laughs> yeah i mean and even him, he himself would agree like it's he had probably a not going to work. 50 50 chance of failing. And he was just like, yeah, oh, I think he, actually more I think he going thought, to fail. I think he, I've seen interviews where he talks about like 80, he's like 80% chance of failing. Yeah, I think 80% was SpaceX or something. Yeah. Anyways, but basically, he launched himself into two endeavors that had like very little very chance of success. And then there's also Neuralink, if yes. you know, whatever whatever you think about that. So he basically, he's, like, he's going like biotech, he's going 
uh, oh. he's going space, he's going electric, like he's 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 pushing the boundaries of what people are doing, but he's doing it in a way that that is aspirational. It's saying, look at what the future could bring. Yeah, Let, let's do like I can do whatever I want. I'm going to create a cyber truck that is going to like just polarize people because fuck them. Who the <laughs> hell cares? Because I want to show. But it's really. I, I want I want to introduce you to the future again. Let me let, let's just make the future fun. Yeah. Right. And I think that's where a lot of like sustainability folk, including myself, and a lot of this environmentalism stuff is just so depressing to listen to. It's I like agree. you don't want to be friends with like like it's it's where like the angry vegan trope comes from, right? Like yes. We kind of all kind of embarked on that that bandwagon, but we need to like find ways of making it exciting and positive. So there, there are some folks who are doing this really well in, 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 in like my space. I think um, the game changers is an example of a really exciting documentary that talks about how you can unlock the, you know, like how gladiators used to have a, a, a predominantly vegetarian diet and, mm -hmm. and, and so on and so forth. And, and it's talk about the best athletes in the world who are accomplishing the most without ever needing to touch meat is a far more interesting way than saying like, look at these animals that are getting like yes. brutally murdered all the time. <laughs> and it's like saying, no, let's improve yourself. Let's like unlock your potential. Let's discover what the world could be. And so, you know, the, the future that you're trying to paint on this farm is this idea. It's not just sustainability. It's not just no, it's in fact, act limit. It's like what's, what goes over. It's re regeneration. It's, it's evolution. It's figuring out the intersection. It's thrivability. Of, it's so. like, what, how can we thrive even better than yeah. ever before? Like, how can we regenerate the soil that it does things that we didn't even believe were possible any longer? Right. Like, how can we do things like, you know, we have trees on the farm that literally have branches of like, it's four and one pear trees. So mm -hmm. it's like one tree, but with four different pears growing on the tree. <laughs> And people were like, I didn't know that it was possible. I'm like, well, it is. You know what I mean? Like, and I would love to see yeah. a tree of life where we have like, you know, I don't know, 365 different fruits growing on the same tree just to represent every day of the of the of the of the calendar or whatever it yeah. is. I, I don't know. I, I I feel like we can do things that are just so different, and it would be so powerful to try that, like to Absolutely. really attempt these things. Um, and I, I yeah, I think what you said is is beautiful. It's it's it. It allows us to imagine something fun again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>